Savannah S is from a company called ICP. This is an Italian company, and they've been doing this quite a while. While we flew around in the airplane, I asked Walter uh, how many airplanes are flying, and he gave me the following numbers that in the United States and North America, uh, including Canada, about 135 airplanes are operating. Worldwide, there's about 2,500 of these flying. This is a well-proven and very cooperative airplane is one way I could describe it. In our all of our flying that we did in it, whatever the speeds are in the airplane, it seems to be very accommodating of whatever the pilot wants to do to it. When we flew, flew fast, when we flew slow, at all times the control pressures were very uh, uniform. Now, of course, when we flew at very slow flight speeds, uh, the control response gets a little softer, as you might expect, but the control pressure stayed the same throughout. That was an interesting thing to discover. I also want to talk about the flaps and the use of them and how the airplane responds when you use a lot of flaps. Uh, and one of the most interesting ways to describe that is on our very last approach to landing. I think we did about three landings or something like that. On the last one, with Walter flying the airplane, he said, okay, here we are at short final. Uh, got down over the runway, actually, and then uh, I said, put on full flaps. This is from no flaps. And while holding the airplane off the runway, just a few feet above the runway, we also fully retracted the flaps. Now, most airplanes, that's probably not a good thing to do. But in the Savannah S, it just seemed to accommodate that, no problem. And on climb out, if you have full flaps deployed, the airplane climbs out with, with plenty of power. In fact, it doesn't even feel unusual. That might be a good short field technique. That's not how you do a typical takeoff. You'd probably use about half flaps, which is about 15 degrees. Full flaps is 30 degrees. Uh, but with full flaps on, the airplane will climb out very powerfully, very comfortably. Control pressures are good again. And I would say, based on my experience with it and what Walter told me as well and what the test pilots have rung out of the airplane, it's, I would say, virtually impossible to stall on full power takeoff. You could aggravate it in some ways, and it wouldn't be a good idea to keep pulling the stick back, but it kind of doesn't matter where you put the stick. Uh, the airplane just kind of wants to keep flying. This is a product of a big bat wing here. We see BG uh, uh, devices on the wing, which uh, help the airflow, but there's no slat on the front of this wing or no movable slot. Um, and yet the high lift capability of the airplane uh, makes it perform well at very slow speed, but doesn't hold it back much at cruise speed. At numbers, if I can remember all the numbers here, we were about 5,000 RPM and seeing about 115 knots. Uh, excuse me, 115 miles an hour, that's a little over 100 knots, or right at 100 knots. At uh, about 4,600, 4,500 RPM, we're seeing about, uh, I believe the speeds were about 100 miles an hour. It'd be about 87 knots at that speed. And at all times, the airplane is very cooperative and easy to fly. It uses a Y joystick, that is a center joystick with a split to the top of the joystick. Very comfortable to hold in. It's a comfortable position for your hand to be in on either side. Uh, Walter is comfortable. He does a lot of flight instruction, I guess, because he wanted to be on the uh, right side of the airplane. So I was on the left. That meant I was using my right hand. And instead of having to hold my hand this way, it's a very comfortable, relaxed position. Uh, and it's easy to control the airplane that way. Plus, it gives the instructor and a pilot uh, or a student uh, a very common feel without your hands having to touch each other and so forth. Uh, rudder pedals on the airplane. Uh, I discovered in flying around in the airplane that it's a, you need to use some rudder to initiate, but then you need to back off because you can overuse the rudder. Now, and if you're going very slow, you have to use a little more rudder, of course, because the control surfaces can't be as effective at very slow speeds as they are at higher speeds. But the rudder in steep bank turns, we've had a number of 60 degree steep bank turns, and uh, use a little rudder to get into it. After that, the airplane almost flies itself around. This is a 60 degree bank turn. These are quite steep turns. At that point, you should be feeling as much as two Gs, but the airplane is completely comfortable inside, and uh, a very impressive airplane to fly. But I think one of the things that stuck out in my mind as much as anything was that this is a very safe airplane for a novice pilot. It's going to be pretty hard to get yourself into a, a bad position. It's always possible people are creative. They can find ways to get into trouble even in simple airplanes. But for someone starting out in aviation, this might be a real good choice for some of those reasons. 
We were flying behind a Rotax 912 carbureted version, uh, which gives uh, all the power that we're used to from that airplane, but it's very smooth uh, running. The Rotax is typically a quite a good engine that way, but the smoothness also comes from the airframe. The airframe feels very solid, very secure. There was no sense of vibration. Maybe a little bit out of the windscreen, but that's going to get thickened up in future models. But for a pilot that finds himself in a difficult situation, this airplane does not want to fall out of the sky at all. In doing that, again, we only lost a couple hundred feet in a 360 with no power. That's pretty significant, and at a decent bank angle, too. So this gives you greater assurance if you did lose the engine, if the engine just quit on you, highly unlikely in the Rotax, which has very few problems. But if it did, you're probably going to get back to the field just fine. And then the landings. Uh, you can see if you come in on a short field landing on purpose, you can touch down and stop in uh, about 100 feet. I think you told me a little bit over 100 feet. But even in a typical higher speed approach to landing with only 30 degrees flaps or no flaps, you'll get it down in only about 300 feet. So this is a very short landing airplane, and yet its cruise capability is pretty good. There are faster airplanes out there, of course, but they're not going to have those other qualities we just talked about. But for a cross-country cruise, 100 knot speed is uh, plenty to get you around the country. Now let's talk a little bit about some comfort inside the cabin. The seats in this particular airplane do not adjust, but Walter tells me that in the future airplanes the seats will adjust. The rudder pedals can be adjusted, but it's ground only, a change of bolt position. So if you were a pilot of very different sizes, you can do that on the ground and then it'll fit you better in the future. But future airplanes, uh, at that time, but future airplanes will have seat adjustability. Inside the cabin, 46 inch width, thanks to some bubble doors that uh, really allow you plenty of room. And uh, there's a little rail right here to which you can add an armrest uh, if you want to have a place to set your arm. That's another feature you can order from the company. Uh, ground maneuverability is another gift to the airplane. But when you land back on the ground and we taxied in, I said, well, I've got to maneuver the airplane a little bit. Uh, you do have, on this particular airplane, this has been used in instruction, I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, it's got tow brakes and rudder pedals on both sides, so uh, uh, both occupants could do that. But in using uh, mostly this, the direct linkage steering, it'll turn quite tightly. Uh, adding some brake to it, of course, will tighten it up a little bit further, but just regular steering is very maneuverable. I mentioned that this airplane has been used a lot in flight instruction. This airplane has 700 hours, a little over 700 hours, I think you told me, in flight instruction. Um, and you know, you can't really tell that. It looks like it's in pretty good shape here. You must either have very good uh, student pilots or the airplane holds up very well. I suspect the latter because students got to be allowed to make mistakes if they're going to learn anything. So the airplane seems to be wearing quite well. Entry and exit to the airplane just about couldn't be simpler. Gull wing doors, as you see, fully opened up. Turn around, sit down, pull your legs inside. You got plenty of room to get your feet inside. I didn't find it any challenge at all. I think most pilots will find that. Plus, you can see the position of the airplane is a little lower. So it's easy to get in. You don't have to climb up to get in the airplane to sit down. Inside of the airplane is quite comfortable. Another good feature of the airplane is high visibility. Full uh, canopy cover all the way back here in those steep bank turns I mentioned doing, the 60 degree bank turns, you got a lot of visibility over the top of the wing. Uh, speaking of the wings, that's where the fuel is located. This particular airplane has got extra fuel tanks on it. A standard one is 21 gallons, about 10 gallons on each side, plus a uh, gallon header tank in the back. And this particular, or all airplanes, I guess, are fitted with both mechanical and electrical fuel pumps. Now, why would you need that on a high wing? Well, because this airplane is capable of such a steep deck angle with full power and flaps down or something that you could actually position the engine above the fuel source. So uh, having the backup of electric is just a, a safety precaution. Thank you very, very much. Speaking of capacity in the back behind the aircraft, there's a, you can see, well, maybe you can see in the camera's eye, it's a dark space, but there's quite a bit of volume back there and you could put up to 50 pounds of gear back there depending on other loading to the airplane. Uh, the airplane is quite light. The empty weight is only 620 pounds among all the light sports that's a low number and given that they all have the same gross weight number that gives you a high useful load and therefore a good payload even with full fuel I don't have those numbers for you, you can contact the uh, supplier on that we'll give you that information in a minute but obviously this airplane offers a lot to a lot of people but what one thing it doesn't have is a high price tag uh, the airplane is displayed here at the show with a price tag of $71,500. That's a pretty low number. These videos last a long time, folks, so check with the uh, importer here to make sure what the final price is. Point is, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to have a very nice flying, very safe feeling airplane that's solid in the air. Those are all good qualities 
I feel very well about my flight in the Savannah S today. All right, so get more information about this low price, nice flying, safety conscious airplane. Uh, you can find all that at icpnorthamerica.com. You can find more about this airplane and lots of other airplanes on my website. That's bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for going aloft with us in the Savannah S here at Midwest LSA. Nice, 55. 45. Starting to feel the first feelings of it. Down around 40, down in the 30s. 38. And that will be the stall out here. You're not going to see the nose drop, you're just going to see a sink. Like it's just a sink rate. Just a sink rate, sink rate, rate yep. Yeah, I've got the stick almost oh, all the way back. And now you can tell, I mean, the airplane's kind of going, hey, something's wrong Something's here. wrong. I need you to do something else. Right. So we're going to go ahead and do the something else. We're just going to pick up a little speed here without actually adding any. You this time go. I'm going to go a little more aggressive with it. Speed is back that, you're go about, yeah. There we go. Okay, speed went away completely there by nice. doing that, but even then, with no power addition, just relax the stick where you can see some ground again and uh, the airplane wanted to start flying again. We've done two stalls since less than 400 feet. Right, so we didn't, <laughs> didn't lose much altitude at Without all. Without power. That's a good, uh, yeah, with no power at all, uh, two stalls, one with a no brake, just a high sink rate, the other one with a mi very modest brake, no tendency to fall on the wing, that's a good